So now with the definition of Angular and the different versions out of the way, let's simply dive into it and let's build our first Angular app. For that, we'll use the official Angular command line interface, CLI. And that is the recommended and best way of creating Angular projects because Angular projects are actually a bit more elaborate regarding their build workflow. There are a couple of files that need to be converted before they can run in the browser. And this CLI does all of that and it also heavily optimizes our code so that we ship a highly optimized code version to the browser once we finally deploy our app, which we'll also do in this course in the end, of course. So the Angular CLI, and you can see all the steps you need to run on the left here. And these steps are the same for Windows and Mac. Now for them to work, you need one additional tool and that's Node.js. Node.js is a server-side language and you might be wondering, what are we doing with it in this course? It's an Angular course, not a Node course. And you'd be right, we won't write any Node.js code here, but Node.js will be used behind the scenes by the CLI to bundle and optimize our project. And we'll use NPM, the Node Package Manager, to manage the different dependencies an Angular project has. Dependencies are things like the Angular framework itself, but also some other libraries that framework uses. So you can simply download the latest version here by clicking on that button. In my case, it's 10.0, but that might differ for you. And you will get an installer for which you can walk, which will conveniently install Node.js and this NPM tool on your machine. Once you've finished the installation, we can run these commands and we run them in our terminal or command prompt. Now here I'm on a Mac, therefore I use the normal terminal. If you were on Windows, you would open the normal command prompt. Possibly open that as an administrator by right clicking on the executable and clicking run as administrator to rule out some potential issues. But in the end, you should be able to simply run npm using that node package venture, install dash g to install it globally on your machine at angular slash cli at latest at latest is optional at angular slash cli is not so you absolutely need to run this now on windows this should just work on mac or linux you probably need to add a sudo in front of this to give yourself the right permissions hit enter and now i'm prompted to enter my password you may or may not be and once you confirmed everything, this should now download the Angular CLI from this Node Package Manager repository and install it on your machine. Now, as you can see, you might get some errors in between like I'm getting here. You may ignore them as long as it successfully installed the CLI, as you can tell by the output here at the bottom. So it added to or it updated to packages or added them if you installed it the first time and you see the CLI and the version it installed. So this did work. Now with that, we can create our first project and we do this with this ng-new command here, which is now available since we installed the CLI. For that, navigate into a folder where you want to create that project. And once you navigate it there with the cd command, you can simply run ng-new and then maybe my-first-app this name is totally up to you. So ng-new is a set command to create a new project. The name is up to you. It must not be test or something like that though because that actually is a reserved word which won't work. Simply hit enter and now this will create a new folder with a couple of files and dependencies and the entire build workflow set up in there. And as I said, we need this more complex setup because for example, Angular uses TypeScript a superset of JavaScript. So basically a language that looks a bit like JavaScript and is compiled down to JavaScript in the end by that workflow, but which also offers some extra features. And to do that compilation, as well as a couple of other optimization steps, we need this more complex setup with all these dependencies. Now, once this finished successfully, and if it didn't, check out the lecture prior to this video here. I do share some common gotchas and fixes there. So once this finished successfully, we can navigate into that with the cd command and then the name of the project. In my case, it's my-first-app. And once you're in there, you can run ng-surf to basically bring up a development server that will run your built and for development optimized app so that you can see it in the browser. The server runs on localhost 4200 by default. You see the output here. 
So you can simply go to the browser, enter localhost 4200, and you should see something like this. This is just a simple starting screen provided by the CLI project. Welcome to app, and then some useful links to the official docs and so on. Awesome. Now this is our first application. Now we set this up. Of course, not too much is happening here. So let's edit this first step and do something more fancy with it and also understand what exactly the CLI created in the next lecture.